$198 plus Walmart plus Schwinn equals the Aluminum Comp 27.5. And if you're a regular here at Kev Central, you'll know I took the Aluminum Comp and added around $50 in upgrades from Amazon, which really improved the ride in my opinion. And that video led to calls for me to make this a Kev Central project buy. So equipped with what was already there, I made or tried to make a couple of extra upgrades to kick off Project Comp Stage 1. I already knew what to expect from this combo, and you'll see why in a minute. I addressed the fork mostly in Stage 1, and it's without a doubt a big improvement over the factory fork. You know, those are very weak and not even really safe on a mountain bike trail in my opinion. Now though, thanks to the new fork, and also armed with those wake bars and the babble stem from the previous upgrades, it's quite usable on the local trails. Smooth and controllable, and no longer rattles up front. And here's a rare sighting of an aluminum comp sharing the trails with someone on a higher end bike. And this guy has a YT. I've met him before, I forget his name, but he's a super nice guy. He's had this for about a year and he says it's still doing great and I'm starting to want one. He also has a brother that rides here and that guy has a Yeti and a Santa Cruz and a note they were both kind of receptive to the Carbon X when I showed them Project X. But back to stage one. Also carrying over from the $50 upgrades is the Mega Range Freewheel and even though this is still a 3x7, that 34 tooth low makes it at least tolerable for me climbing. The lowest levels of tolerable, yes but a vast improvement over how it was out of the box, though still a task. Now I did shed some weight on this bike, but it still weighs around 33 pounds. And combine that with the e-bike life that I've been living, and well, I'm huffing it even on the flats. I'm gonna slow down here for a second and see if you can spot the deer, because there is an entire family of them that's off to the right, running to the left, and I think one even coming from the left to the right. My GoPro locked up earlier when I would have had the absolute coolest shot. And one day, I fully expect that I'm going to run into one when they're crossing the trails because over the past year or so, there have been some fairly close calls and these things really need to learn to look both ways. But close or not, it's still fun seeing them. So how would this stack up against my other project bikes on these same trails in their stage one builds? I would say pretty well. And in a couple of cases, even better, at least at stage one. Most of that due to the RockShox 4. So I think this has met its goals. It was very wallet friendly, especially since about $50 of the upgrades I already had, and well, technically even the fork. So let's look at the stage one components. From before, the wake bars, they're still holding up well, as is the bevel stem. Now it is heavy, but cheap, $10, and it's doing just fine. Though I may change this in stage two for something that gives me just a little more reach. The grips, you see these are still the factory grips. I had purchased new grips for stage one, some Rock Bros. I really like that Rock Bros logo, and you may recall the bike grips. So descriptive. I talked about these in another video. Well, I couldn't resist. Sadly though, and I hope this is a fluke, the lock screw snapped before I could tighten these down enough that they wouldn't twist. I have another set, but they're red, but I want to see if they do the same thing. I'm also still using the Shimano Easy Fire trigger shifters for that 3x7, and now let's talk suspension fork. Another thing I didn't have to buy because I already had it. This is the RockShox 30 Silver TK from Project X, my Carbon X upgrade, and that Carbon X is getting upgraded to something even better. And as you saw and can see here, it works well on this bike. Now I'm gonna do something I don't normally do on these stage builds. I'm gonna make a comparison. Between this and the Trek Marlin 4, that's the cheapest mountain bike, they don't really classify the 820 as a mountain bike anymore, that Trek makes, it comes in at around $480. I think it's a good comparison between this and Project Comp, at least so far. Now I'm not saying if you have $480 to go buy an aluminum comp and start upgrading. As always, if you have the money for a better bike, go get the better bike. You're gonna be happier. Plus, you get dealers set up, you get a warranty you don't void by upgrading it, there's less peer pressure, all the vanity, blah blah blah. What I'm saying is that ride-wise and on paper, the Stage 1 comp stacks up well, or at least fairly well, against a bike that costs around $50 more than the aluminum comp, and my investment in it thus far. They share the same shifters, and the bars on the comp are even better in my opinion. The Marlin 4 has 620 by 25.4. The comps are 720 by 31.8. They both have aluminum frames and both have a lifetime frame warranty. Suspension fork, the comp takes the crown there with its rock shocks with 100 millimeters of travel versus a Sun Tour with 75. The Marlin wins on the tires and wheels. It has Bontrager XR tires that are decent tires. It also has a better wheel set and though they're both double wall, the aluminum comp has cheap big box hubs that just aren't as good. They both have mechanical disc brakes, though stage one keeps the generics and they work well 
but the Marlin 4 has Tektro, albeit the lowest level Tektro. For pedals, I bought Rock Bros for this build, and then I remembered I had the Ezra's, and I think those are possibly even better, but either is going to be better than the Wilgo platforms on the Marlin 4. The Crank Arms Marlin 4, it has the Shimano name, but they're really only better in name than these Pro Wheel 170mm. The same for the chain rings, they're both stamped and riveted 3x unless they've updated something on the 2020 Marlin 4. The front derailleur on the comp, that's generic. It's going to be going away in stage 2, but for now, comparison sake wise, the Marlin 4's Torney is a better derailleur. They both use the same KMC Z series chain, and the rear derailleur, unlike the front, they both have a Torney here. Same model. Now, I upgraded the aluminum comp to a Mega Range Freewheel for about $15. 14 to 34 tooth range, yet for some reason, Trek on the Marlin 4 uses the 14 to 28 tooth like seen on a $100 Walmart bike. But they did make up for it slightly by using a quick release on the rear versus a bolt-on. It's also worth note on the aluminum comp that it has room on the rear frame for wider tires and also with the new fork up front. For now, I've kept the factory saddle on the aluminum comp, but like the Marlin 4, it also has a quick release seat post. So you can see they kind of stack up, and I think the comparison is somewhat valid, because lots of people buy a Marlin 4 to try out mountain biking as cheap as they can, and I feel that stage 1 of the aluminum comp can perform as well or better than the Marlin 4, and it gives hope to people like me that like to upgrade over time. I did this over about 6 months. I'm happy with the results of stage 1, and next I'll upgrade the wheels and the drivetrain and make this even better. Comment below with your thoughts on Project Comp Stage 1. I hope you're subscribed and you have the notification bell active so you don't miss anything on stage 2. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and now check out a few subscriber submitted big box bikes.